Okay, so many um, of my project students have been asking how to do graphs in Excel uh, for their data for their final year dissertation. So um, this is just a quick video showing you uh, how to do that. So for those of you who are my students, um, what you need to do first of all is put your reaction time data into some sort of table along these lines. So for example, here we have one factor of working memory load, whether it's a high working memory load or a low working memory load. Here we have task sequence, which uh, should be familiar to all of you, so whether it's an ABA or a CBA sequence. And in here we have the individual reaction times. Now, you also need a second table, uh, which I'll come back to shortly. This represents either your standard deviations for each of these conditions, or your standard errors, uh, depending on what you're going to use. I use standard errors just because it, the smaller values um, makes the, the, the figure look m more neat. So this is how to do uh, a simple bar chart in Excel. I'm using Excel 2007. I don't have an earlier version. Also if you don't have access to Excel 2007, um, I think the procedures are pretty similar in the Open Office suite. Uh, but just follow these guidelines and it pr should be pretty uh, similar to what I'm going to do. So first of all you highlight everything, so this includes uh, the titles of each of the, the, the levels of the two factors. Uh, then we go up to insert, go to column, so technically it's a column chart not a bar chart. Select this first one, so only use two dimensional column charts, don't use three dimensional or cylinders or cones. Try not to be too fancy, we'll talk about this when we come to the colouring. Try and keep it as plain as possible, so two dimensional is the best. So select this. Now here we have um, the chart and this is uh, the basis of what we're going to use so it's very straightforward. So we have reaction time on the y-axis and we have the conditions uh, high working memory load, low working memory load on the abscissa or the x-axis. Then we have separate uh, bar charts so for the blue bar is for an ABA sequence, red bar is for a CBA sequence. So these could be any other conditions, the idea is still exactly the same. So we have the chart, but it's not in APA format, so we need to do some things to it. First thing we need to do is get rid of all these horizontal lines. You have no horizontal lines at all in um, in graphs that are in APA format. So to get rid of them, you just highlight them and hit delete, and they should disappear. The other thing we need to do is change these colorings. Don't use colored charts in your final report. This is because chances are you'll print it out on a black and white printer and you may not be able to tell the difference between these if it was converted to black and white. So try and keep it as boring as possible. So to change the colorings just select for example this blue one. You'll note it selected both of these so we're changing both of the, the ABA um, uh, sorry the ABA columns. So just select them right click and go to format data series. Now here you can see we go down to fill so we're changing the fill to a solid fill um, and we'll perhaps change this to a lightish grey like so. Likewise now we select the red and it selects both of them. This box should st still remain open but if it closes just again right click format data series go to fill solid fill and just change it to perhaps a slightly darker shade of grey. Perhaps a little bit darker than that actually. Okay, so now we can easily distinguish between the two um, and this is much clearer. So the other thing we need to do to make this a APA formatted um, is add some error bars. Now error bars are typically um, quite tricky to do in Excel um, but I'll show you that quite straightforward. So what we do first of all is we just select one of these uh, bars, so we just selected the light grey, the ABA sequence, and then we go up here to where it says chart tools, we select um, layout, the layout on the ribbon, and go to error bars. Now we're going to use these values that are in here, so the standard deviations or the standard errors that you've calculated, um, as the error bars. So for example, for high working memory load ABA sequence I have a standard error of 21 milliseconds. So for this one I'm going to have an error bar going 21 milliseconds up and 21 milliseconds down. 
So we're just completely covering the mean reaction time, which is this, with one standard error in both directions. So we go to error bars. Although it says error bars with standard error, we don't want to select this one. We want to select the more error bar options. So we select this. Now here we can select which direction we want the error bars to be. So by selecting both it will go um, one value that we've specified in each direction around the mean. You can just do it going just down or just up. This is OK as well, but it's slightly better just to do it fully surrounding the mean like that. So now we need to stipulate, uh, sorry, stipulate the, the, the actual value of the error bars. So we could have a fixed value. Uh, we could just write 21 in here. However, what this is going to do is going to change both ABAs. And you'll see that for ABA low working memory load, so this one, our standard error is actually 16. So we can't use the same value for both. So the way Excel works is that when you're doing your error bars, it will do it for two things at once. So therefore we need to go to custom and actually specify the value by selecting the relevant range on the Excel worksheet. So we go to specify value, clear this box. This is the positive error value, so this is how much we want it to go up by. So this is where it gets a little bit complicated for some people, they find it a bit tricky. So we're working on ABA reaction times only, which is this first row here. So therefore our standard errors are this first row here. So what we do is we just select both of these. What this will do is for the high working memory load it will select 21 for the error bar and then for low working memory load it will select 16. So we do the same for the negative as well, so this is the value coming down. Just select both and hit OK and there we have it. There's our error bars for both directions. So now we'll quickly do the same for um, sorry, for the CBA sequences, the other part. So error bars, more error bar options, both directions, custom value, specify value. And now we're working on this bottom row, so we just select these two. Same for the negative. And there we have it. So you could just use this graph here, but it needs a little bit more tweaking. So for example, I might move this over here might resize my font, maybe size 12 is a bit better. Select the axis, change the uh, font size to 12 on this and on the bottom as well, to make it a little bit larger. We also need a, an axis title for the Y axis here, so to do that select your graph, go to layout and axis titles and we're working on the primary vertical axis title. So we want a rotator title, so if we click this you can see we've got a rotator title here that we can change and in this case our dependent variable is reaction time in milliseconds. So again change the size of this to about I don't know maybe 14 that seems okay. So there we have it I mean this is pretty much our, our final graph here we could use this put this in the report and that would be fine. I will make it slightly easier um, for myself by just getting rid of this this uh, surround here. You shouldn't really have this sort of surround in an APA formatted graph so we'll just get rid of it. So select the whole thing, right click, format chart area, so fill, select no fill, border color, select no line. So we're saying for the border we don't want a line. Click close. So you see it's got rid of the line, it's also got rid of this area here. So now we want to just select this inner um, square, right click on here, so it's the plot area, so format plot area, and select no fill as well. What this does is it just makes your graph completely transparent, so then when you copy it into Word it will look a lot nicer. Uh, it seems to pixelate if you don't do this, so this is better. I might make these a little bit larger. And that's it, so we've got everything, so it's a clearly labelled graph on the y-axis, on what the uh, x-axis is. We've got clear distinctions between the conditions uh, with a light grey and a dark grey. We've got error bars that are correct values using our standard errors. And we've also got a, um, a key to what the different colours represent. So now what we do is we select all of this and we'll change it over into Word. So I'll just open my Word document. So I've started a small results section 
Um, so I'll just copy and paste it in here. So you'll notice if I just scan out a little bit that the graph has gone very big. Um, that's not good. You'd like it quite small and modest. Um, it can look a bit unprofessional if you have the graphs too large. So make sure it's large enough to be able to be seen. Um, center it so it shouldn't be left aligned, it should be center aligned. And that's about it really. Uh, so this is how you do a graph. It's very important that you must refer to the figure in the text. So you'd start your results section by uh, discussing what trimming procedures you conducted on the raw data. So for example getting rid of error trials um, and any other standard deviation trimming you may have done if you've um, met with me to talk about it. We've gone through that with you. Um, so you need to talk about a little bit that, about that and then say just a line mean reaction times for all conditions can be seen in figure one. So you must reference all figures that you put in. Under the figure you have a figure caption um, which is just telling the reader what the graph is and what it represents. So the figure captions work by just indenting the, the whole thing so we'll see it's indented by about an inch there. Um, the name of your figure so it's figure one and then you increase that sequentially depending on how many figures you've got should be in bold and then in italics afterwards you um, just outline what your graph represents. You also must um, define any acronyms you've used or uh, abbreviations. So for example I've said mean reaction time in brackets in milliseconds MS because we've used MS up here and if we went to stipulate that MS means milliseconds the reader might not be sure. For ABA and CBA task sequences in both the high and low working memory brackets WM because again we've used WM here so we've stipulated what this means. It's also very important that you um, state clearly what your error bars denote. So you can use error bars for standard deviations, standard errors, confidence intervals, um, least significant difference. There's lots of different things that error bars could represent. So you always have to tell the reader what your particular error bars are. And in our case there are standard errors around the mean. So that's clear. Once you've written your figure caption you just continue with the rest of the results section left aligned. Make sure everything's double spaced. Um, and that's how you do uh, a graph in Excel. Line graphs are very similar so just follow the similar sort of procedures. Um, it all comes down to really how you lay your data out uh, initially. If you laid it out clearly then you should be fine. Um, and that's it. Okay so any questions just drop me an email. Cheers.